Hey, this is uh, Sean Sean. I do specials on eBay and I also sell on my website, seanshawn.co. Today I'm going to be talking about Robin Hood. So if you don't know, Robin Hood is one of the most famous tales from the Middle Ages of England. And it started back in probably the 13th century. The earliest written record is the 1500s. And they started redoing, as soon as film came out, they started doing versions of it. So in 1908 they did a short. Uh, 1938 did the first major kind of feature film and uh, that became kind of the blueprint for Robin Hood and so they didn't do another one until like the 1950s and then they did another one maybe 20 years later 20 years later and then in the 90s they just started doing them every three or four years so they really I don't know it's kind of in my view kind of like a little bit overkill but it's a popular tale so it's fun to kind of do so it has a whole bunch of different stars in this so it has uh Taron Egerton, Jamie Foxx, and Ben Mendelsohn. Those are the three primary characters. And Eve um, Hewson, who is Lady Marion. So, basically, I like this version quite a bit. It starts with Robin Hood. He kind of lives a life of luxury. Someone tries to rob him, which is uh, this Marion. And so she's the first thief in the, in the book, which is interesting. So she tries to steal from him, he gets caught, and then he's like, well, you can take a horse, it's okay, I don't really, I have a lot of horses anyway, being a lord. So they fall in love and have a romantic story, until he gets drafted. So this is kind of interesting, because I don't know if they had a draft back then. <laughs> but they did have the Crusades, so that's realistic, in the sense all these guys would go the Crusades. So a lot of the guys that went to the Crusades, they're really landless knights. Um, so they're loyal to the king, but they didn't have any land. In this case, they're saying Robin Hood had a, a estate, so he probably wouldn't have had him sent him. So in that case, from the historical aspect, it's probably a little bit incorrect. But, you know, it kind of works. Everyone knows what a draft is from Vietnam and all this. So he gets drafted, sent to the war. Um, so that's pretty interesting. He gets really battle-hardened. He had this life of luxury. Now he's battle-hardened as a soldier, seizing all his friends die. He became a very good archer. And he almost gets killed by this other character, Jamie Foxx. Who becomes little John later and they basically save each other's lives one tries to save his son life Jamie Foxx's son little you know John's son and he can't but then he's kind of punished and then he's sent back um, in the meantime while he's off to war he comes back and Sheriff Nottingham had seized all his property so in this case you know he's just ready to settle back into the life of luxury but you know since Sheriff Nottingham stole all his wealth he's just really kind of bitter about this he went and fought for this guy and now he stole his whole estate. So this is a really good um, premise for why he becomes Robin Hood, which I really liked. And at the same time, Marion, you know, since he was told that Robin Hood was dead, she is dating this other guy. So it's terrible, you know, <laughs> Robin Hood lost his love of his life, plus his house, um, and all his wealth. So that puts a great incentive for him to become Robin Hood. Jamie Foxx's character, who had you know been very grateful for this guy to, has saved his tried to save his son but he wants to end the war and get back at those guys that had you know led to his son being killed which was obviously sheriff nottingham so you have this kind of calm combination it has a really good basis of a story um there's more character arc i would say in robin hood which is fine he's the main character um so he goes from lord to soldier vet, embittered veteran and then robin hood right this other guy is like soldier um, in better veteran and trainer of Robin Hood so kind of very similar pass and Marion plays kind of this in-between character from Robin's old life as a Lord and now his new life as Robin Hood and slowly gets found out that he's Robin Hood and then uh, for the villains it's really interesting because you have not only you have Sheriff Nottingham which is the traditional villain who's kind of pillaging and um, overtaxing the peasants in this case he's almost robbing from them so it's really drastic showing how evil these uh this villain is you know taking all the pennies out of him which is people are going to relate to any kind of high tax government you know like in europe maybe so like they're having protests in france kind of like they're gonna have a robin hood too right one of the nicer aspects is you know sheriff nottingham is not only this guy that's driving the war to on his quest to you know usurp the king so the king is kind of this absolute key he's gone on the crusade so he's trying to gain the power of the king by winning some key battles in the Crusades and then he'll be later appointed the king as a successor so a sheriff not was kind of setting himself up to be the later king so he's a really power hungry guy who's you know he got to the he was already the sheriff of Nottingham and now he's going to be really even more greedier and so he plays he plays the villain pretty well I would say 
So all that kind of, all those elements kind of come together very well. I think for improvement, maybe you could have had maybe an earlier um, Sheriff Nottingham, why he becomes so embittered and so power hungry. That might've been interesting. The other interesting dynamic is he's not the only villain. The other villain is the church. And so the church is kind of soaking up the money as well. And they're the main reason why the, all these knights are volunteering, or in this case being drafted in the movie, to go fight for the motherland is to go seize back the Holy Land. So, you know, the, here you're seeing the church is being very corrupt, very power hungry. So that's a pretty interesting portrayal of the church. I'd say probably in other movies is more neutral, wasn't maybe as um, corrupt. So this has a really nice kind of feel to the thing because Sheriff Nottingham's kind of the middle guy in a way. They kind of sets the stage at the end of the film for a second um, Sheriff of Nottingham, which is really interesting. So they're actually going to do this in two parts, I think. So it'll be interesting if the first one does really well, they'll probably do a second one. I don't know if the second one's going to do as well, unless they shot them back to back. If they shot them back to back, they probably had the same quality, similar to Matrix 2 and 3. They've had a very similar feel. So I don't know if they're going to shoot them back to back. It'd probably be smart if they did. We'll see what happens in Robin Hood 2, if that's a success. I mean, there's been a lot of Robin Hoods on the market, so... It's kind of like really a bloated market. Um, we saw the same thing happen with King Arthur. They brought really great talent together, and then the movie just bombed. People are so sick of King Arthur, right? It's been out for over and over and over again. And Robin Hood's done over and over again, but it's always kind of a funner movie maybe than King Arthur. King Arthur's a little bit more stilted, kind of crusty story versus Robin Hood always feels a little fresh. But anyway, I think it was a pretty well done movie. It's very fun. I wish I could kind of seen it in the premiere so I could... Um, you know, recommend it earlier, but I recommend it. And if you want to give me a like, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe below and hope to see you on the next movie review and check out my painting. Thanks. Mm -hmm.